As Mike spent virtually every second he could working away, he also was lucky to have a connection to one of the biggest names in the game, a connection that would change his baseball life. Tommy Lasorda had grown up with Mike's dad and had stayed so close to Vince that he was named the godfather of Tommy Piazza, Mike's younger brother. My dad told me stories. He used to go watch Tommy play in, in the local leagues, and Tommy was making a name for himself. He was a very, very good left-handed pitcher, and they really kept in touch. You know, Tommy went to coach. Come on! Come on, guys! Come on, Tigers! And do his minor league managing, and my dad went in, into the car business, but every time in the offseason, Tommy would come back and they would reconnect. His father and me were great, great friends, almost like two brothers. Fortunately, I could go in with Tommy. I was, you know, I could go in and out of the clubhouse like I was on the team. They clinched the pennant here in 1977, and it was the funniest thing. My dad carted me, and my brother took us in the clubhouse, and I have pictures with Dusty Baker and Garvey, and I remember being in the clubhouse watching a champagne party after a pennant. It was like, this is unbelievable, and it gave me so much inspiration. I was like, this is what I want to do. Every time we went into Philadelphia, he was my bad boy. I think I was probably around 12 years old, and Tommy said, hey, take Mike down in the cage and throw him some batting practice, and we'll come check him out. And I'm with the wood bat, and I'm just smashing the ball. And Tommy was walking up the tunnel with my dad, and Tommy said to my dad, who the hell is that hitting? And he turned around, it was me hitting, and he just was blown his mind. He was like, holy shit. He hits the ball harder than some of our guys now. So from there, I think he kind of knew that I had some talent. A few years later, Lasorda arranged for someone who knew a little bit about hitting to pay a visit to the Piazza home while in town, Hall of Famer Ted Williams. Yeah, he looks good. This kid looks good. He hits the ball good. Damn, this kid looks good. He really looks good. Thank you. I'm not kidding you. You look great, buddy. Thank you. you do. It was like this larger-than-life character, this John Wayne character is coming into my house, and I start hitting, and he starts watching me, and he was blown away. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think I hit the ball as good as he does when I was 16. I'm not Holy. This kid hits the ball harder than I ever did at 15, 16. And he told him that he was a better hitter at this age than Ted Williams was at his age. Now, nobody knew about that, that Ted Williams had spoken those words. Now, I want you to cock and stride. Don't swing. Cock and stride. Stay back like you did then. Stay back. That's right. Now, swing from there. Don't go out to get the ball. Get everything back here so you can swing from here rather than going out to get it, right? Cock and stride. Cock and stride. And Michael's doing that. He, Ted Williams said, God damn it, this kid, he catches all real quick, for Christ's sake. This kid could really hit. But you really look good. You really look good. I'm not kidding you. That kid looks good. Right, you got the scouts on him already, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I'll be your agent, buddy. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, and the one thing I never forget that Ted Williams said was, you look great. He goes, but that's only half the battle. He says, the rest is pitch selection, knowing your strike zone, hitting the ball where it's pitched, reacting to situations and off-speed and it just kind of seared in my memory. Here's a kid that's going to be a 210-pound kid, 20-pound kid. He's going to hit the ball. I guarantee you this kid will hit the ball. Piazza became a star at Phoenixville High as a power-hitting first baseman, but no one else seemed to see what Tommy Lasorda and Ted Williams did. There was actually only one scouting report ever filed on him in 1986. The overall analysis was mediocre, and though it suggested that he might be worth drafting, it also noted that he had no solid college offers to play. The Piazzas ended up making a call to Lasorda, who helped him get into Miami-Dade Community College. But there, despite hitting well over 300, Mike got little interest from pro scouts. I asked five different friends of mine to go out and see him play, hoping they would sign him. And all five came back and told me he can't do it. He was very upset. And I said, maybe you ought to become a catcher. I said, that way you don't have to have the agility to, to first base. And if you learn how to catch, maybe you might have a shot. That's when we started kicking the idea of possibly changing and converting to a catcher. Mike Piazza was 19 years old, his chances of a baseball career more minuscule than ever. Our scouts did not like him. Our 
scouting director did not like him. And I told them that at the draft time, I said, draft this guy. They didn't want to draft him. I said, I want him drafted. I don't care where you draft him, but draft him. So that's when the Dodgers uh, got together and Tommy called and, and said, You're going to get drafted by the Dodgers. And Mike was so excited, and I was excited too. I bust out in tears, and Michael, he's all choked up too because he didn't really believe that the Dodgers were going to draft him. So in the 62nd round, he got drafted. And I got a little telegram, said, you know, just congratulations, the, the LA Dodgers, you know, have selected you in the, in the amateur draft, and um, that was it.